The Vinci Resolve 14 just came out of beta last week and what perfect way to celebrate this release than to release an entire video series tutorials dedicated to this piece of amazing software. I am not a professional, let's get that straight, but I have been using DaVinci Resolve since 2013 when I first got the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, which is made by the same people who created DaVinci Resolve. Now, I actually just started using the paid version of DaVinci Resolve because if you are not shooting 4K, you can still use the free version. There are some limitations, but DaVinci Resolve Lite is still as good as DaVinci Resolve Studio. So, now, these, uh, this series here, we will go over the introduction from cradle to grave with some extras in between. So if you've never used DaVinci Resolve 14 and are looking around YouTube to see how it works on what to do, how to do stuff, this is the perfect video series for you. All right, so when you first click DaVinci Resolve 14, it should take you to a main page that lets you create a new project. And ultimately, you're gonna end up here. Now, before we do anything here, we're gonna reset our UI. So let's go to Workspace, Reset UI Layout, and that's just gonna make everyone's UI look like mine, or it should. So let's go over what's in front of you. The top left is gonna be your media storage. This is where you're gonna begin all your footage from, all your assets from. The bottom after that, so down here is your favorites. So you can add favorite folders. The masters is right below and the smart bins, which we'll talk about later on. Moving on to the right, this right here is where you're gonna see the footage that you import to. This one right here is your preview window where you're gonna preview all your videos. To the right of that is your meters and waveform. The bottom is your metadata and this right here is your media pool. Now, before we do anything else here, Let's check out our settings by clicking this bottom right cogwheel window thing button. That's going to bring up the settings for this project. Under the master settings, you're going to be able to change your timeline resolution, your aspect ratio, your timeline frame rate, playback frame rate, so on and so forth. You can also change your bit depth and in the bottom, you're going to be able to change your optimized media. What does that mean? We'll talk about it later on, but you can actually optimize media if you have a slow computer in DaVinci Resolve 14. So what we'll do is just change this to DNX HRLSQ because I'm using Windows. You should have ProRes if you're using Mac. Let's go ahead and do that. That's just gonna help me with my processing power with my computer. The next thing I'm gonna go over is just the image scaling. Just going over the settings here. The resize filter, I always have it default at sharper. Okay, scroll down, nothing else there. Color management. This is pretty important if you have different color space. The default color space is DaVinci Yellow RGB, but you can also change this to YRGB Color Manage, meaning this is gonna be unlocked and you're gonna be able to change it to whatever you want, like sRGB, sRGB, sRGB color space and you can also use aces here if you're familiar with aces but DaVinci YRGB is the, def the default setting for this that's that lookup tables uh, look uh, 3d LUTs are actually getting really popular nowadays it's because it's such a good tool but this is where all your lookup table stuff is going to be you can open your LUT folder or you can update it when you download LUTs you can find that folder here. It's gonna open into a window explorer and you can copy and paste it there. But you can also generate LUTs from here. So just know that it's right there. I know if you don't know what LUT is, that's fine, but just so you know, it's right there. Let's look at general options. I don't usually do anything here. I don't think I leave all that in default. Yeah, I don't do anything there. Camera raw, if you shoot an airy red Sony Cinema DNG, which is black magic, Phantom Cine, uh, you can change the way you debay your, your footage in here, but I don't shoot any of these cameras. I wish I do, so I don't have to deal with that as well. Capture and playback, I don't deal with that much because I don't capture anything, but it's all there. Let's click save and let's go back to the main window. 
Now, before you start, go ahead and download the footage I provided in my Google Drive so we're following along the same path. So now I'm gonna look for that footage. Mine is an F and it should be in DaVinci Resolve. Just find it somewhere on your desktop, wherever you saved it. Let's see, D, 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 D. DaVinci Resolve 14 and it's this footage here. You can also change this into a list mode if you don't want it to be in thumbnail mode by clicking these two icons and you can also use the search button if you want to. Really, really handy stuff. So, we have our footage here. This was shot with a Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K at Kokum Castle, Germany. Uh, I shot it at 4.6K raw and you can see you can scrub through it. And another tip, if you're having problem with this and it's giving you a hard time because your computer is not that great, if you go to playback, click on performance mode to, be, to enable it if you don't have it enabled already. Make sure you have that clicked. Okay, so we have our footage. What do we do now? Well, the next thing we're gonna do is we can either just drop, drag and drop it into our Eclipse Media Pool, and it's giving me something saying the clips have different frame rate than the current project settings. What does this mean? Well, I shot this at 23.976, but I our timeline is 24. But it doesn't matter, we'll just click don't change because they're really the same thing. 23.976 and 24 is pretty much the same frame rate. So. That's fine. So there they are. We can take a look at the metadata for this, which I really didn't do anything with. If you go with this, you can unhide it. That, if you wanna show it. So if you wanna hide these and clean it up, you can al you always just click audio metadata and capture if you wanna turn it off and on. So yeah, now that we have our footage, well, what do we do? Well, the next thing to do is go to our edit page. This is where all the editing, cut and pasting happens. So from here, you're gonna get a preview window again, just like in the previous page. There are a couple of ways you can add your footage to your timeline. The first way is you can do a pre-cut is what I call it. I don't know the, the term for it, I'm not professional. So, um, but basically what happens is, let's say you see this little arm here that just popped up. We don't want that. I'm gonna go a little bit after that. We're gonna click, right click, we're gonna say mark in, and then we're gonna go, we're doing a pre-cut even before we take it to our timeline, all right? Let's just say there, it's fine. We're gonna do mark out. After that's done, you're gonna right click that, convert in and out to duration marker. After that, you click this footage, drag it and drop it to your right window. There you go, you already made a cut prior to bringing it into the timeline window. Now, delete this. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Remove all markers, okay? The old school way would be drag and drop this there. Find that area. Hover your mouse to the left side of the clip and it's gonna change the icon. And then you can cut it that way and then you can also cut it the other way. You can click on that space, press delete, and that's gonna ripple delete it to the beginning of your timeline. So that's all I have for you guys today. We're gonna stop right here because I don't like to make my video super duper long. If you are interested in learning DaVinci Resolve, make sure you like and subscribe so I know people are actually interested in this so I don't just make a lot of videos and nobody really, nobody's really watching it. So if you have questions, let me know and thanks for watching.